All right, this video has been a long time coming and I'm so excited to talk about Avatar Frontiers of Pandora again. Having beaten the game now, I can confidently say it is one of my favorite open world games I've ever had the pleasure of exploring. But how about the photo mode? Well, it's a bit lackluster, but the world itself does most of the heavy lifting. Let's get into it. So the photo mode in Avatar is fairly limited, but I think it gets the most important things right. I think these three core settings are what have me sticking around to take shots. One, the range on the camera is pretty good. Is it death loop, go wherever you want to go? No, but it's serviceable and you can get a pretty good distance from your character. Two, time of day settings. It's still kind of amazing to me that this isn't in all game photo modes. Certain titles I can understand, like I'm playing The Last of Us right now, which uses baked lighting throughout the levels, but any game that has a dynamic time of day system and doesn't allow adjusting that is beyond me. The final thing is simply the world itself. Pandora is a genuine marvel to look at and by far the most next generation feeling world I've played. Every plant, animal, floating mountain retains so much detail, even at close scrutiny. It's so much fun to shoot. One thing I have noticed in a lot of photo modes lately is the lack of depth of field control on far away things. Now what I mean by this is, say there's a distant object, a mountain or a campsite, you simply can't lock onto it with your focusing tool. It's almost like the game has like a limited range of how far the focus will work. Now Avatar isn't the only culprit of this, but it's as if the game's photo mode depth of field range is limited to what is immediately around you. This makes some shots impossible to get where, say you want to get a shot of the foreground blurred out with the distant landscape in focus, it just can't be done. Then it shouldn't be done, it can't be done. Avatar also has some interesting quirks to the photo mode that can actually be used to your advantage. For example, there's this setting where your character can perform an emote. This setting is kind of useless anyway because it's just a looping animation making still photos difficult. Kind of weird that that's even in a photo mode. However, I learned that if you quickly select an emote and then turn it off, your player character will often lock into a unique pose that isn't otherwise offered. Here's one where I managed to get the character holding their hand out, which made it look like they were feeling the rain come down. Kind of an odd thing, but cool if you get it working. Something I want to praise the game for is its diversity in lighting scenarios. There are so many moments in the game that offer vastly different lighting looks from harsh bright sunlight to pure cloudy studio type light. This is where the time of day adjustment really comes into use. Take a look at this shot here and just appreciate how vastly different this image can look just by changing the light. Is the photo mode perfect in Avatar? No, we know that. But I think the fidelity and beauty of the world more than make up for a simple photo mode. The truth is, you often only need to open the photo mode, choose a direction, and bam, you've got a lovely photo. One note, taking photos in performance versus fidelity mode makes a big difference. I typically like to play games at 60 FPS, but when you look at an image side by side, you can really see the difference. These days, I pretty much only do fidelity mode in games if it has a photo mode for that reason. Thanks for watching everyone. Next video I'm hoping to have out is covering The Last of Us, both part one and two, and you know, some of the changes with the photo modes there. Till then.